Hey there, rulers. DMO73 here, bringing you a feature match between myself trying out an Alter Leica list versus Jordan and his Order Shiva list. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to pre order upcoming Force of Will sets, CCGPrime.com for singles and supplies, Cardodoco.com for those rulers in the international market looking for product, the Ruler School Circuit Series now taking orders on our quarter three 2024 circuit kits, and our guest lecturer members, Bite Ramen. Class is in session. So as we get into it here, we just a reminder that you can get signed up right now for the August 3rd and 4th Ruler School Discord circuit, where the winner will take home the exclusive Uber variant of the Two Friends and a Cat playmat. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you there for that one. It's going to be a lot of fun as we prep for the last August GP. So Jordan, one of my locals on the left, is playing his Order Shiva list, um, making use of uh, Agni and Rudra, which is already a big hurdle for Leica, dealing with the fact that her board is mainly very small things so rudra will wipe my board very quickly and then this like a list is designed uh, by neem valunkin who has uh, done some excellent work for the channel before and topped some events this is a very cool build um it is pretty much like the most stereo like it's the most refined Leica engine that I can find and then just on back pocket has alter to make use of the fact that she can spam out a board very quickly to then make use of getting an Electra out of nowhere to kind of close out the game as necessary also has a great a lot of ways to be able to have Leica dodge the uh stat neg issues that can come out of it so we're starting here with the communication with animals this is primarily to grab the half of the opening combo that you don't have which is specifically bird or rabbit. So if you have rabbit, you want to reveal bird. So you can grab a bird. If you have bird, you want to grab rabbit. It's kind of how the cycle goes. This lets you set, set up the zero will kind of beginning opening line for her and also creates uh, extra will to be able to play into a transcend process because you can remove it from the graveyard to pay the will for Therion morphing. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and reveal rabbit so we can grab a rabbit and this will let us get to do the nice little setup here for the beginning of the game. So the way this works is we attempt to cast rabbit by discarding bird. Bird lets us then reanimate because it was discarded. So before rabbit even resolves, we get to animate bird and suddenly we have this nice little setup here. Um, where we have two bodies on field and then starting next turn we'll be able to kind of transcend between the two of them rabbit then comes in a play tapped and gets to generate us some value here if we hit a beast unfortunately not uh no grabs there but still gets us the two bodies and thankfully we have um the reunion with or communication with animals to be able to transcend since we have the morphing in hand already like you said like I said before, this Rudra is going to be a problem. Just by itself, it is going to pretty much be able to wipe out every single board that I could generate at the beginning of the game every single turn, and it's only going to get worse from there. So we're going to respond before it can get entered effects and use Therion morphing here on bird. And so this is going to transcend. We're going to get to put in bird morphed, which is then going to get us to draw a card and RFG a card. This is the main piece here. We draw a card off of the stone as well because they had a wear beast J ruler enter the field. So a nice first stone to hit. Uh, now we're going to get to RFG a card and draw a card. This is mainly really helpful because we'll have two cards in the RFG and you'll see exactly why in a moment why that's helpful. So RFGing a card, just kind of picking which one we want to save here. Thinking about the Chev's Tears or the bird decides, or the wolf, I think we decide to keep the Chev's Tears, which I think is correct. Getting to draw a card and then we can tuck those two cards back from the RFG still before things resolve uh, to use the, because we're not playing against Lahen, we can use Liberation of the Fires to pop our bird and pop the Rudra. So before it gets access to being able to get all those plus one, plus one counters, and then Therion morphing because our J ruler we control was destroyed, a were beast we can put it to the bottom of the deck and draw a card. So a nice little reset there to keep ourselves from getting immediately blasted and we get to burn Jordan's coin. It's a lot of work to have to do that, but that Rudra would just be backbreaking potentially. We see um, this uh, rushing dinosaur come down here. It's probably gonna be able to swing in, get six damage in. Cause we don't have a way to block it. So yeah, we're just gonna take the six. 
And then at the end of the turn, we're going to go ahead and use Lyca's ability to ping the rushing dinosaur and the player with the highest life, which is Jordan, for 200. Which then lets us, because we removed board, we get to draw a card and discard a card, discarding another bird. So we're going to go ahead and once again use the bird to just get another 200 damage in there. This is mainly just to help us draw a cycle. Um, we want to try to see combo setups. We want to try to see more Therion morphings. We need to be able to kind of get into that if we want to find our ways to lethal here. Um, the fact that we're only, we were able to burn coin for Jordan is pretty good for us. Um, does give us some interesting setups, you know, some some safety a little bit here. We're going to go with a magic motorized vehicle, uh, which is going to get to set us up for, provided there's no Agni or Rudra on the next turn, um, we get set up to get some pretty aggressive damage in since we have Rabbit up. No Theragun morphing to be able to buy back, unfortunately, but we can at least still see what we got there. We have spot removal in hand in the form of Chevalry's Tears. We also have another Liberation of the Fires if we need to. Choosing not to order the uh, Agni here I think is a little bit of an interesting choice uh, Jordan has it in hand could have ordered it maybe doesn't want to walk into the same kind of thing where his technique gets blown out there he doesn't have any way to protect it um, needs to find a way to deal with this rabbit though is the biggest piece because the rabbit's going to be able to help motorized vehicle get turned into a creature during the recovery phase uh, which then can't be blocked so that's just 1500 damage that he's going to have to take um does decide to throw down a three beast warriors here uh, it can target the uh, magic motorbike so it can at least try to draw into a card a rushing dino will be able to swing get another 600 damage in here if he wants to go that route um, does decide to take it takes me down to 28 um, through the ping and the swing um, but ultimately from there it's going to have to just pass leaves me with a pretty open turn here um, we're going to reanimate the magic motorbike before recovery kind of like we said and then we're going to take use of the fact that we have this lovely um, re replicant Shiva here in the uh, revealed outside the game that we can use to actually weirdly make the um, uh, mot motorbike even bigger. Uh, we can go ahead and cast this, which will pop both the uh, rushing dino and the magic warrior, or the three beast warriors, getting four counters on everybody. So now um, we not only get to hit for 19 with the bike, but we also get to hit for four with the rabbit, because the rabbit actually has stats now, thanks to the uh, counters. So taking Jordan down to 13, this is a pretty comfortable space for us to be with. Now we're in a spot where our guys have untouchable, which is really nice. Um, and we kind of go from there. Jordan looking at this Agni, a little bit too late on the Agni line here. Really needs a Rudra, but Rudra also not super great against two Eternal Bodies in the form of the Replicant and the Addition. Uh, because once again, before recovery, we could awaken, or we could turn on the bike using Replicant Shiva, then recover and then swing with both. Um, and it puts Jordan in a pretty dangerous position. Does choose to go for three and play his own Replicant Shiva. Unfortunately, because it's not solarized, he doesn't have anything in the RFG, it's only going to deal damage equal to the thing's attacks, which actually doesn't even kill the rabbit because the rabbit has 400 uh, attack and 700 defense at this point. So it doesn't even clear the board. Um, does put an eternal blocker out, but then it's three blockers, uh, three attackers for one blocker, and that's not going to help here. Um, so unfortunately, a little too late. Also had double rig Veda, just never saw the time to use them. So we're just going to block the Shivas together and then get to move to our turn and just swing in for lethal. Swing in for uh, post recovery, animate the bike, throw the bike at him, and we go into game two. So we're in game two here, Shiva getting the coin once again, hopefully trying to set up, you know, hoping that we can go for an Agni Rudra setup. Um, we're probably going to try very similar lines here. Just a pass though for me, no um, beginning. Uh, 
no beginning bird cycle here. We do tell Jordan to don't forget to call, uh, draw a card for the beginning of the turn, orders out the Agni. Um, we're gonna go ahead and use Chevalry's Tears to burn that off the board, get it out of the way. Call Stone. Down comes a Rudra. Now, Rudra, when not ordered, is not that big of a deal. It's going to get very large very quickly, um, but it's not going to be able to pop the board. Now, now we have to watch out for destroying another ordered Rud uh, ordered Rudra or another ordered Agni. Um, that's the big problem here. We're going to try to go for that line that we saw before. We have kind of free reign to do it here. Communications of animals gets us rabbit. We get to pitch bird, reanimate bird, and rabbit. Uh, get to dig a little bit, set ourselves up for a Theriod morphing. Like, this is kind of the traditional opening lines for Leica. It feels a little silly just how many bodies this deck puts out so fast that you can kind of see why it might be an altar build. This time we do get access to a um, Ra uh, Remus or Romulus, which is nice because this will also then get us Remus. Uh, this is kind of like the most optimum play line that you could see here because then Remus gets this Therion morphing that we didn't have in hand, which sets us up to be able to transcend. So, you know, casually putting four bodies out for one will, uh, for two will, and then uh, getting ourselves to be nice and set up. Now, this Rudra is very huge, so we have to be worried about an Agni and Jordan just casually top decking the other ordered Agni, which is immediately a problem for us. Uh, so we have to fight it in response to its inter effect before he gets will to be able to um, protect it with the Rig Veda. Why we're going to use Therion Morphing to transcend, going to go to bird form. We're going to burn form to try to ditch a card and draw, hopefully draw into some kind of spot removal. Unfortunately, we do not see any there so we are at risk of losing our entire board and taking a bunch of damage to face off of these burn counters gets to call stone so now he's supported by rig veta and this is just not a good space for us to be in swings with the rudra uh, at this point in time just to try to help us maybe draw into some more cards we're gonna throw the light uh, bird morphed underneath it to get destroyed so then our um theory on morphing can get shipped back and we try to draw into another card um the liberation of the fires certainly would have been fine there because we could, before moving to end phase, just unchaseable dodge Rig Veda by using liberation to kill something. Uh, unfortunately, just didn't see it. And so Rudra gets to burn the whole board because of Agni's order effect. Agni gets to burn our face and we're in a bad spot. Doing some cycling here just to try to ping, get some damage here, draw a cycle. Um, we also could have tried one more time there too to do that uh, at the end of Jordan's turn. Um, we could have tried to go for that dig just to see if there's a world where we get another uh, liberation of the fires before I don't have a board to commit to. Uh, unfortunately, out of luck. The biggest weakness here is now we're playing into Rig Veda. Like we have to have um, a way to clear this board or we're just never going to be able to establish again. Um, and then we're just going to die to the Agni Rudra burns. And unfortunately here you see we fully whiff on hitting a green source if we hit a green source here we could at least try to do solarized shiva which would at least help us kill the rudra and then we could you know swing at the agni and that would kind of maybe help but unfortunately with no um with no line here we're just gonna take damage we're probably just gonna have to end up doing rogue spectator just to avoid getting burned to death uh, we're gonna try for a communication of animals just to see if we can again try to dig into something this is mainly also to potentially bait out a um an access to a uh bait out the access to a rig uh, but this gets to resolve we're gonna try the animate cycle and the trigger cycle. This gets us bird. This is my other play line that's possible if we can bait out a Rig Veda here. Although it's quite possible if I remember correctly that I misplay it because I don't know how cards work uh, and it's a red deck. So you know me, gotta misplay a red deck at least once every single time I put it on the channel. So attempting to animate bird, attempting to animate rabbit, um, seeing which one of these gets stopped by a Rig Veda gonna go ahead and rig veda the rabbit i believe so that the bird gets to stay on field the rabbit makes the most uh, hitting the bird makes the most sense or sorry canceling the rabbit makes the most sense 
because then um, the bird, you know, I don't get that card advantage wise. And here's where I mess up. So I start to remove these four cards to cast this uh, Horned God of Aradia. That's a mistake. Uh, what I should have done is removed Horned God of Aradia from the graveyard since I had a beast on board to be able to uh, ping the Rudra for two which then by it being removed from the game could ping the rabbit, uh, search for another beast of Aradia, could ping the rabbit and pop the Agni because of its removal effect, not its hard cast effect. This is just me being dumb. Um, so, and forgetting how its kind of cycles work here. Um, so getting to uh, animate a few things here. Uh, doing the cycles off of the other cards that were removed for its cost. Rabbit gets to be, buy me back a um, beast, which gets us the Remus. Uh, we're probably going to cast the Remus to try to get another Therion morphing. Like, we're just truly digging as much as possible here just to hope to survive. But unfortunately, again, if also, if we had had a green source in this situation, we could have just gone for a Therion morphing after we, uh, or a, a Replicant Shiva after we baited this out. And we would at least be dealing with just the Agni, which is just burnt to face, which is still terrifying, but at least is better than nothing. Um, unfortunately, though, we, we just truly whiff how the sequencing of this goes. We're going to lose this entire board. Um, we're going to get to be able to block some of it, maybe, but still deal with the burn damage of the Agni uh, coming face. is going to be terrifying. You see the Electra in hand. The goal is like, we'll try to survive and play Electra next turn and see what happens. Um, and it just didn't work out. So my inability to know how red cards work, uh, once again, pays off dividends uh, for my opponent. <laughs> and I missequence that. And uh, I'm going to take a lot of damage here from the Agni. And then the Rouge was going to get to swing in. So we go to Jordan's turn. And then before recovery, so that we don't walk into a Rig Veda, we at least give ourselves a chance by casting Rogue Spectator. This is just to have a body to block. Uh, because right now there are 32 plus one plus one counters on that Rudra. And that's a problem. Uh, getting a third source here for Jordan. You see he has a, Rig Veda, a second Rig Veda in hand. Three Beast Warriors, and he also has the Shaka spell, uh, which is just going to let him get to swing twice anyway. So there is absolutely no way around this. Um, this is just lethal on board. It's just a matter of watching it play out. Swings in with the Agni. We say that's fine. We'll take 12, go down to 16, uh, try to block. Try to block with the Rogue Spectator. He's like, yeah, that's fine. You can block with the Rogue Spectator. That's fine. I won't even use the Rig Veda to destroy it. Now I'm just going to use I alone, recover, and swing in. Then we go into game three. Going into game three here, trying to take the coin, hoping to see a green source early, hoping to be able to use Replica Shiva, remembering how cards work, and also just saving all the spot removal in the world for whatever the ordered Agni Rudra card is. That is the biggest piece here. The other one doesn't really matter. Neither of them have Pierce, so we can just kind of block them for infinite uh, with the number of bodies this deck puts out very easily, though we do have to dodge something like Rigveda uh, to be able to pop them. But we just got to save our spots for the order elements here. Um, just going to see Jordan get started here, probably with a Callstone pass, or might even just see a rushing dinosaur coming in if we see it in that opening regression. Um, and yep, there it is. Uh, rushing Dinosaur gets to swing in for six. A strong start for Jordan to be able to kind of rush me down here, put me in an awkward situation. Um, we're going to have to just accept that we're taking that damage. Call Stone. See a 4C here. We do have Bird. And once again, this lets us the opening of communication with animals, which gets us Rabbit. Rabbit gets us Bird and Rabbit. Um, we can do all kinds of kind of setups here, sets us up for being able to do uh, a nice convoke or a nice um, transcend process if we need to. Doing the cycle here, discard bird, bird then gets to finish resolving rabbit. Rabbit actually gets us a card off the top. We get another rabbit there, which is really nice. This does set us up for just more follow ups later. And then past turn, we have two will open and, or we have one will open plus the ability to produce one red for beasts thanks to um, the uh, communication with animals here. Starts to look at maybe ordering Shaka 
does say, you know what, this, it's better for me to try to force Jeremy pressure-wise here. I think the better call is ordering the Rudra. I agree wholeheartedly in this early position, keeping my board clear is exactly the right way to go. Uh, we're going to try to transcend. We're going to transcend um, bird form here. And then we're going to use bird form to RFG a card and draw a card, getting rid of the bear. Bear doesn't really do anything here. And then we're going to tuck these two cards back. And we're going to use liberations to target the rabbit and Rudra, because the rabbit can't block the rushing dinosaur anyway, but bird can. And so that's a really good, important piece to note here. Because the, the rabbit, uh, rushing down can only be stopped by, can't be stopped by one or less resonators. I'm a jade ruler and technically I'm bigger. So this is just a better spot for me to be in. Hey one, we see a sniper shot. This is not what I want to see. Um, <laughs> this is now going to mean that this rushing dinosaur gets to hit me for a lot of damage. Does burn some resources from Jordan, but, um, we do have to have we do have to essentially play around this. Um, we're going to accept that this is going to be destroyed mainly because Therion morphing is then going to help us draw into another card. Um, tuck that back, draw a card. We're going to then use Laika's ability probably here in just a second to uh, draw and discard a card thanks to. Um, removing the bird from game because we need a second card to be able to do RFG for exactly the reason you'll see in a moment. So this rushing dinosaur now is swinging for eight, uh, or sorry, it would be, yeah, swinging for eight. Uh, as he goes into combat, so it doesn't get the drain, the ping, we're gonna go ahead and ping him and the uh, beast for two, draw a card, discard a card. Don't really need Romulus right now. We're going to then use coin for Rogue Spectator. Remove Liberation of the Fires to reduce fire for uh, Judgment of a Fire Ruler. Um, but mainly just because we want it to be able to be RFG'd here. And then we're going to tuck those two cards back and do another Liberation of the Fire to kill the Rushing Dino. That is a lot of work to not take Rushing Dino damage, but it is 100% necessary because of just how devastating that will be if it gets to resolve. Getting to get access to uh, the stone here is very, very nice for being able to um, set ourselves up for some more hard hand, card hand advantage. Shiva doesn't have a ton of great early game card advantage, uh, and so getting able to transcend is really nice, especially when we drop Knight of Transcendence here. Uh, so we will be able to translate, transcend into Rabbit. Also very, very good for being able to dig into stuff here. We're gonna go ahead and ping our own Rabbit and ping him for two. Uh, this is mainly to, again, set up Liberation Line, so we have two cards in the RFG that we can use. See, there's an Agni there. Pay one, we're gonna order out the Agni. Reading exactly how big this guy's stats are. Thanks, unfortunately, because of the pump, it's a little bit outside of the range of what we could just burn. So we're gonna respond to him getting enter effects by attempting to transcend. So this serves two purposes. If it works, um, it, then great, we get a rabbit, we get some value off of it. If it doesn't work because he uses a Rig Veda, it's just an activated ability. So it taps him to only having one will to be able to play with after that. It gets an Agni out of his, a Rudra out of his hand. Uh, it helps us a lot here. We get to draw a card off of the stone and then we get to attempt to try to cheat in a three drop or less uh, beast from the top three. That's gonna get Fossil Girls, not what we were anticipating. Uh, this does mean we still have to watch out for a Rig Veda. Does call stone. Thankfully, in this hand, he doesn't have one. Uh, it's two shakas uh, and then the um, snipe, the wind uh, Mimi buff element here. So, a little helpful for us. We're going to accept that we're going to take 400 burn damage from the Agni. That's fine. Uh, move to recovery, call stone with rabbit. And we get to kind of go a little nuts here. We have to be careful because if there's a Rudra, or if if we try to go all in trying to answer this board uh, and we get burned out by a um, if we get burned out by a Rigveda we're in bad shape uh, we start to think about solarizing Shiva here um, to be able but solarize Shiva won't be able to answer this um, Agni because of how big it is so uh, 
we have to full cast it to be able to answer it. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can get 400 damage here with Rabbit. He says, that's fine. Then we get real greedy here and hope there's not a Rig Veda, and we play our Shiva. Pay three, Shiva. Replicant Shiva is going to try to destroy the, the Agni, so we won't take any burn damage this turn. And if it wins, we get another plus one, plus one counter on all our stuff. Successfully resolves. Thankfully, you did not have to worry about a Rig Veda there. Although very dangerous if uh, that, that hand was not... Um, was Shaka plus um, if that hand was Shaka plus a uh, I alone uh, we would be dead <laughs> on this board state uh, with what he just drew into his hand because we are fully tapped out uh, and we have to accept it thankfully it's only double Shaka so we do have a little bit of a chance here Shaka gets to drop base stats now is 8-8 eight, eight because the plus 2 plus 2 from Shiva is doubled um, doesn't seem like it can swing right now so we're just kind of calling it good pays a full 3 to cast Replicant Shiva this will not get to kill anything because again it's the same problem as it was before um, it, the bunny doesn't have enough uh, attack it has it's a 5-9 so Shiva can swing at it but then won't get any plus 1 plus 1 counters and at that point we don't really care we're trying to block the Shiva or the Shaka with Shiva to prevent as much damage as possible uh, mainly also thinking that we probably are just going to try to save the rabbit using the Shivas which actually would be a really good way to make me misplay here um, just because of kind of the board state we swing in with the Shiva I block with my Shiva they bounce off of each other so I get to save my rabbit uh, and then he swings in for um, well first off he what he does to be able to swing in is we have Shiva's flame armor which gives plus 600 and swiftness uh, so this is actually plus 12 and swiftness to the Shaka uh, which is gross uh so this is now swinging for 20. you see what i mean where i say um this guy has pierce um if it had been uh, i alone then instead of playing the shiva you just uh pump shaka up himself with his own pump ability which would then be able to even if i block with the shiva pierce through recover or pierce my face and then i die um so Thankfully, I got a little bit of a lucky out there. We get to four stones. We survive the turn. We're going to see if we can kind of maybe bait some stuff out here. Just swinging in for four first. Take him down to 28. Um, swing for another uh, seven. Or swing for five. Uh, swing with the Shiva. And then just full send it. Uh, on a four drop Electra to close out the game. And that is gonna be able to take it. Thankfully we hit it, it hits him for 16, then it gets to swing for 16 and we're pretty safe there. So a great match. Jordan really put me on the back heels, really making me work the race of a red deck versus another aggro red deck. I hope you guys liked it. Deck profile for Lyga Alter will be up later this week. And until next time, this is DMO73 saying class dismissed.